So this is a pretty horrid sight. Whole hillside just covered in garlic mustard. Garlic mustard, I believe it's Eliera officinalis. It's a, it's, it is a cress a, in the mustard family. If you look careful, you'll notice that each, um, each of the flowers are, are four petaled uh, cress. Think cross, I guess. That's a good way of thinking about it. Uh, mustards, of course, have all these oils. And those oils make them distasteful to a lot of different things. Uh, this is an introduced species. It only lives two years. Um, but it, it causes all sorts of harm. Not only does it grow really big uh, and, and just completely, as you can see, blanket a whole area. But uh, as if that wasn't uh, bad enough, it, uh, it's an allelopathic plant. Uh, it exudes certain chemicals to give it a competitive edge over other plants. So what it does it, uh, is it actually um, sends out these chemicals. It, it has chemical warfare with other plants. It makes it so other plants have a harder time germinating and thus you end up with monocultures of this plant. Some people also think that uh, some of the chemicals it exudes affects some of the mycorrhizal fungus, the fungus that grows in the soil, which is symbiotic with some people claim up to 70% of our trees. Uh, and other plants. And so when that happens, we lose some of these uh, beneficial mycorrhizal fungus. Um, it basically converts the soil into something beneficial for it, but at the harm of everything else. Uh, it, if you were to, so people do try to control it, yank it, pull it, whatever. Um, if you do, especially once it's flowering, you do need to bag it because if you just leave the plants lying there in the ground, which end up happening is this the, the, the thing still exudes the chemicals and so it still affects the soil. And if it's far enough along, it'll actually also uh, still produce seed. So you didn't do anything. It is evergreen, so the little rosettes, first year in the wintertime are the best time to try to control it. Now there's another interesting thing about this plant that it is that um, it is implicated in the destruction of one of our, uh, 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 the demise of one of our native butterflies, the West Virginia white butterfly. Oh, and there's a cabbage white butterfly, similar to the one that just flew by, but much weaker flying, uh, dark body, dark veins on it, um, no spots. But it feeds on toothworts. And again, I don't have a toothwort right nearby that I can show you, but uh, toothworts are also mustards. They're in the same family, they're crests, but they're much smaller. Um, they're an ephemeral plant, they come up about the same time. But this is such a big plant that it covers the area. So when a butterfly comes by, a West Virginia white, and lands on there and tastes it with its feet, that's how they taste whether or not they've got the right host plant, the right caterpillar plant, it's looking for toothworts. But the mustard oils are similar enough that the butterfly gets confused, lays its eggs on this plant, and thus the caterpillar is poisoned. So where this stuff spreads, and like I said, boy, does it spread. <laughs> it ends up wiping out the West Virginia white butterflies, which have a much better chance of finding this than they do the tiny little toothwort. So again, a nasty plant needs to be destroyed, taken out of our uh, landscape because of all the problems that it causes. Garlic mustard. Now it is edible. The uh, first year plants are better. They don't build up as many mustard oils, but the garlic piece of it, it does have a, um, kind of a garlicky taste to it. I've uh, seen people make pesto and, you know, and, and use it for all sorts of different kinds of, uh, uh, of, of substitutes. So it, you can, it is edible when it's younger. Uh, when it gets older, it's not just not that edible anymore. But again, maybe one way to possibly control this nasty, nasty plant, uh, an exotic invasive garlic mustard.